From under the lockdown of following the rules, we have a guest chef come to teach us his family's traditional rustic German rhubarb meringue cake, just to test his eyesight. All right, we're back on Recipe Rewind, and we've got uh, a special guest with us, Mr. Dane Hughes. He is the editor of the Protagonist magazine and a hobbyist chef. Yes, that's my favorite rhubarb meringue cake. This cake is a delicious mix of textures, and it's best matched with a juicy, sour rhubarb. We've already made the first rhubarb recipe in a cookbook, but while the British, after that 1806 recipe, were busy making jams, fools, and tarts, in Europe, the Swiss meringue was adopted more readily. With rhubarb plentiful in northern European and German gardens, the stage was set for this delicious recipe, which Dane tells us comes from his family heritage near Hanover. So where did you get this recipe from? So this recipe is actually an old recipe from my grandma and her mother used to make it as well. Mm. And they had uh, rhubarb in the garden mm. and it always turned out brilliantly and it's really easy to make. Well, if you were to place a period, like a date on this recipe, what would you say? I'm not quite sure. So I know my, um, my great grandma, she also knew the recipe. Um, but I'm not sure how often she would have made it or whether she made it before the war, the Second World mm. War. What would you say is the optimal texture for meringue? So for me, in, with this cake, I prefer it to be a little bit moist in the middle. I don't like it too dry. And that's also the reason why I put three egg whites with 175 grams of sugar rather than two only, because the more sugar, the drier the mm. uh, meringue will be. And I like it with moisture because it's, it's that layering, isn't it? So you've got the pastry on the bottom, then you've got the rhubarb, which is nice and juicy mm. in the middle, and then the meringue on top, which sort of like is a mixture of, of those textures. So a lot about that is, is about the texture. You know, once you dig into it, you've got the three or even four different textures there. Now let's see how it's made. So for our rhubarb meringue cake, we've got four lovely stalks of rhubarb here. In addition, as per the recipe handed down through the generations, you need 220 grams of flour, 150 grams of sugar, 150 grams of butter, three eggs, one and a half tablespoon of baking powder, a packet of vanilla sugar, and for the pastry, three egg yolks and two egg whites for the meringue with 175 grams of sugar. And those are your simple ingredients to get started. So let's chop our lovely rhubarb, clean it a bit here on the ends. So if it gets too stringy, you can pull it off. But actually, if you have it on, then it has more of a pink color after. Big, I suppose it's always like a centimeter cutting them um, because it won't be in the oven that long. So you want them to cook. And also the meringue on top will be quite delicate. So you don't want it too chunky. And there we go. Lovely rhubarb. So as we all know, we don't want to crack the um, egg yolks because then we ruin the egg whites and we can't stiffen it anymore. Dane speaks to his preference for a ceramic bowl and wooden spoon. It's really important, I think, to use a wooden spoon because it has more, sort of, it's more coarse and the ingredients actually mix better. So we've got butter here and I left it out to soften a little bit. So we mix the butter with the sugar. So I put it all in. Want to make it really nice and fluffy, so give it a, a violent stir. The sugar is still crystallized, so you can hear a little crunch as you stir it. Add the egg yolks, mix in, and add baking powder. Danny's using a special German baking agent, which he says works especially well. And if you do mix that with the flour, and after that you can add that to your the rest of the mixture here. Add the vanilla sugar and mix one last time. That's it. So we've got a really nice fluffy dough here. Use some butter, put it all over inside. And lightly flour the pan. Add the mix and spread evenly. So a couple of words on the dough. So this is a stirred dough, um, a Rührteig, it's called in German. And it's quite nice and fluffy, but it's very sticky. Um, now we have different types of dough and the other one is the biscuit teig um, which is a very fluffy sponge um, that you would use for more sort of confectionery and um, more delicate cakes and this one is not that delicate so you can actually just you know you can do whatever you want with it. What we're doing now is the rhubarb. So the rhubarb is not cooked as you can see. But that's okay. Throw the rhubarb on top and it'll cook in the oven. Press it down ever so slightly. 
because of the dough in between you want that to rise in between. Put it in the oven for 20 minutes at 180 degrees to cook the base of the rhubarb through and take this time to start your meringue. Whip the egg whites fast, like really fast, gradually adding the sugar. You've got some paste on When a soft, creamy consistency, take out the cake and add on top. Baking until a perfect golden brown. All right, now you've seen how it's made. Let's see how it tastes. Dane, you want to break open the first Absolutely. piece? Absolutely, let's cut into it and see. Cool. You can see the three layers or four layers because the four layers we're talking about is the meringue on top, isn't mm. it? So we've got the, the hard bit of the meringue. Can you hear that sound it makes? And then here we've got the softer bit. It's quite soft actually in there. Mm. And now for a taste. That's great. Mm. It's like a gritty sort of sponge, isn't it? Yes. So I think also the fact some people use um, caster sugar to, to bake something like this. You could do that. But I actually quite like that sort of sandy feel, isn't it? It's mm. a bit more, gives it a bit more crunch. He said delicious cake and the meringue is perfect. Dane's tip for the optimal meringue is fresh eggs. The older the eggs, the um, less uh, acidic they are. So the protein breaks down a bit more and is less strong when you, when you whip it up again. Thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. And it's been a pleasure to, to do this recipe together, especially as we don't have much else to do at the moment other than eating lovely food. No, we might be seeing more of you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this rich, layered recipe comes at a time of scant ingredients, and while flour might be hard to come by, rhubarb is a fantastic addition to your garden if you happen to live in a temperate climate. This is an easy and delicious recipe that you could substitute with any fruit that you have available, and you can see why this particular recipe has come so far in the family. This is a little bit of being thin while eating. Mm. <laughs> If you want to try out this historic recipe and make it for yourself, visit RecipeRewind.com where you can find the how-to for every Recipe Rewind dish. To stay updated and for more exclusive content, follow us on our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Recipe Rewind.